Again, Japanese proved that Maserati and Ferrari Aero stock is just not good enough. This Ferrari has the body kit on it and it actually looks pretty decent. I like what they did with the fender there and the front end looks pretty sharp as well. It kind of looks like the Enzo front end but it's not bad, it's not bad. It's not too aggressive, keeping it classy, keeping it sporty. Kind of like the way this looks. True JDM cosplay style model here in front of the van. This is one of those things you only see in Japan actually. This is actually a camping car modified with a body kit. You can see here what the interior looks like. As you can see here, the van culture in Japan is pretty huge. These are not the typical vans you see in the States. These are more boxy, more compact, more function. It kind of got like an Iron Man look to it. A lot of times these vans are hooked up with a lot of audio, clean interior. So of course this one's got bags and what's interesting here oh my god it's got racing seats mounted on the metal frame as far as I can remember this little tiny pickup truck has been here since I don't know four years ago three years ago that I went to Tokyo Auto Salon I see this thing every year but it's pretty sweet you can see that this is way smaller than anything you can find in the States these are called the K trucks usually you got small four-cylinder engines inside and it's basically like your Tacomas and mid-size trucks but even smaller than that all right I'm here at the Autobax booth Autobax for those of you who don't know is actually like a auto zone or advanced auto here in Japan it's got an interesting wing construction the wing is actually held all the way to the back of the car it's not even attached to the body until it goes down to the diffuser and here is a Pagani Ryder just chilling looks pretty stock for the most part I'm glad they haven't really touched this car because I saw a Pagani Zonda two years ago that had a body kit on it and it looked hideous some cars like this just need to stay the way it is so this is a Miata NB Miata but as you can see it has been turned into something that you wouldn't even recognize anymore the tail lights look like a Lotus and center cutout exhaust but the wheels kind of give it away that it's still a Miata alright guys you might want to wear sunglasses for these cars because these has been coated with some kind of jewelry both Mercedes are completely bling bling one gold one silver so much bling bling looks like here are some of the BIP cars BIP cars actually are should I say the original Stan's HelloFresh style cars it's usually made of Toyotas and Lexus BIP VIP cars are usually slow, stanced, and it's only built for good looks. Although these cars have performance brake kits because it's a show car, most of these VIP cars you see on the streets are built mainly for just cruising from A to B in style on bags. And same with vans too. Vans can be lowered and turned into VIP cars. And look at this wheel on this van too that's something you don't see every day on a van and here is another new Miata with the rocket bunny kit with such unfunctional camber front and rear of the car couple Japanese girls in front of this pink Lamborghini with crazy shiny crystals <laughs> is the Momo steering wheel booth I'm gonna be running some Momo steering wheels so this is a booth I want to check out of course there's a cute girl standing in front of it but there's the steering wheels in the back I'm gonna test out a bunch of them 
Steering wheel for days. Okay, so here's a Prius, and you might be wondering what is up with that crazy tail light. Well, this is actually the new Prius that's about to be released here in Tokyo. I think this is a 2016 model, and although it has a body kit on it, not much has been done to the car. This is what the next generation Prius is gonna look pretty much, except obviously for the pink color. And here at the Calsonic booth is the Calsonic R35 GTR. This Calsonic blue and the GTR combination has been one of the most iconic color themes in Nissan Skyline GTR's racing history. Here at the Honda booth, you got the new Honda Civic Type R. I think this is the car that set the fastest time on the Nürburgring for the front wheel drive class. Still looks like an egg, but it's a fast car. But look at how big these brambles are on this tiny car. I'm sure some of these aero, or most of the aero here is functional from factory, but to me it looks a little too much. And of course you got the brand new Acura NSX, or should I say Honda NSX here in Japan, race car. Again, Autobax is one of the big sponsors for this racing. Look at this aerodynamics in the rear though, that is ridiculous. The side skirt looks like it's sucking in some air, producing downforce and coming out the diffuser in the back. Over here is a CBR1000RR that you can actually sit on. Dunlop boost, more race cars. Come back in VIP car section here. You got Holy shit, the speakers are spinning in here. I feel like I'm in a club. This is the type of stuff you see at the Daikok parking lot where girls and guys are dancing outside at a car show. Inside looks like it's inside of the club. Crazy. Yeah, you can hardly tell what car this is anymore. Another VIP car. Another VIP car. And this is a unique car that I'm glad to see here. This is an R34 Skyline, but it's a four-door Skyline. You really don't see these cars anymore, the four doors. Of course, Nomcam prefers these as his drift car, which I hope to see tomorrow at the drift event here at the Tokyo Auto Salon. Here's a 350Z with interesting bumper up front. A lot of things are exposed. There's an air filter there in yellow. And uh, yeah, it's got its own unique look to it. It's boosted like everything else here at the Tokyo Auto Salon with a wide body kit. Right next to it is a Liberty Walk GTR race car. I think this car actually do compete in um, Formula Drift. Look how aggressive this setup is here. Exhaust dump out the hood and two Garrett turbos right up front strap. Not a huge turbo but should be good enough for drifting. It's pretty crazy that people have developed these cars to be driftable. There's some battle scars on the side. It's got the Japanese Zero Sen style paint on the side, or should I say wrap? Doing it right. It's good to see Liberty Walk cars actually racing in the racing community because a lot of times people with the Liberty Walk kit don't really race their cars, which uh, is honestly kind of disappointing. And here are a bunch of cars that I'm not gonna even bother filming. Actually, there's a lot of cars that I haven't filmed at the Tokyo Auto Salon show because there's just way too many for me to cover. If I film every single car out here, I'm gonna run out of battery and footage space. All right, now, can you guys guess what car this is? This is an FD RX-7. I think I saw this car two years ago at the Tokyo Auto Salon. I'm painted which looked hideous and I'm, it's still kind of questionable whether this car looks good or not but uh, it sure does look better than it did two years ago. Here's a Carrera GT, just chilling 
and nobody's paying attention to it because apparently in Tokyo, Carrera GT is just outdated and nobody cares about it. One of the most badass racing simulators I have seen at a car show. Of course, it's got the triple screen, of course, it's got the steering wheel and gear shifter, but the seat is actually moving along with the game. And more girls in what looks like a bonded suit. So many Lamborghinis. Now, that's what I call a functional van. This is actually a pretty big van for being made in Japan but as you can see it's nice interior but you can fit two motocross bikes in the back made by Nissan pretty sweet All right, but there's another four-door R34 I think at this point there's more four-door Skylines than there are two-door this is something I haven't seen in the past few years I've been at the Tokyo Auto Salon over here is the Nissan Stasia modified. It is interesting because a lot of times people put the R34 front end on these cars. So it looks like R34 GTR wagon. But in this case, it's just the Nissan Stasia with RB26 in it. It's one of those proper built race cars here. This is a D Max S15 that competed in the Formula drift series in the US it's got this huge GTX 42R turbo pushing about a thousand horsepower ridiculous amount of power for S15 drift car if you come to the rear here it's got the fuel cell if you look here in the fender area looks like everything has been cut out and the car is basically built on cheap frame that's a proper race car right here and here's another Autobax NSX race car. There's a lot of NSX and GTRs. I'm kind of getting tired filming all that. Uh, and there's a lot of wheels. Holy shit. There's just rows and rows and rows of wheels in this booth. Japan Light Alloy Wheel Association. Interesting. And now I'm at the Nissan booth, and of course at the Nissan booth, there's a Skyline GTR 35. This looks like the most aggressive aero I have seen all day here at the Tokyo Auto Salon. Huge canners that wraps all the way up to the fenders, side skirts. I don't even know what's going on with the side skirts. It looks like the side skirts have its own wing over here. Let's go off to the side. So here's a close up on the side skirt here. Look how it wraps around from the tire into the car and sweeps up. Downforce there, two corners there, actually three corners there, creating additional downforce. Looking at these cars, it looks like the side skirts corners are a new thing this year for all the race cars. And when you look at the inside of the car, you can really see how far back the driver sits inside the car and that is done to have 50-50 weight ratio as much as possible in these race cars. Over here we got the Z4 race car and an FD. Oh wow, look how aggressive this thing looks. And it also has the car shop glow LED taillights which I'm considering buying for my own FD. And unfortunately, even though I want to look at the FD right there, there are a bunch of girls posing and I cannot get to the car. That's just how things are here at the Tokyo Auto Salon. I just want to look up the FD. Come on. FD, FD, no. Okay, so I'm at the bright booth chilling in this race seat because I've been walking for just way too long. Four or five hours on the street waiting for the FD booth to be cleared out so that I can actually look at the car. Alright, so people have cleared out and now I'm in front of this beautiful Time Attack RX-7. Looks like it's got already Amemia wide body fenders. Super, super aggressive front splitter. Look how wide that thing is and look how long it extends out. This is such a clean build. If you look at the interior too, 
the dash has been completely rebuilt and it's kind of hard to see due to the light I just can't get over how aggressive this rear end looks I want that wing on my FD and this whole setup really in the rear here and this thing wins the camber award of the day or at least so far look at that in Japan we call that Onikan O-N-I can can is show for camber front is the same way I don't even know how these guys ride around in town like that I can't even imagine the crazy tire wear that you would see with a camber like that whoa and this is interesting setup what is this so this Z has VQ35 swap I have never seen these before I didn't even think that was possible and if you look on the interior holy crap the dash has also the 350z dash even the steering wheel let me come around to the right side here wow i saw this was just another z car look at that that's got 350z interior that's amazing here is probably one of the cleanest z's you'll ever see wide body beautiful orange and it's been modernized as well it's really beautiful and here is a Hakosuka skyline I've never seen a Hakosuka so clean in my life well done well done ご協力お願い申し上げます。